Hi, the purpose of this video is to show you how to adjust images of fluorescent samples acquired with velocity on the BX61, also known as Neville, on the, or the IX81 microscope, also known as Luna. So to make adjustments, there's going to be uh, several things that you need before you can start. So the first thing you'll need is proper data. So images must be exported from velocity as OME TIFFs. Do not export them as TIFFs because that increases the likelihood that there will be a mistake somewhere along the processing pipeline. And do not export them as JPEGs because JPEGs are a, comp a compressed format that is what's called lossy. So it throws away some of your data to compress it. And so it irretrievably damages your data, something that you definitely don't want to do. So export them as OME TIFFs. The second requirement is that images that have been acquired with the same settings should be grouped into the same folder. So if all of the images you acquire had the same settings, just put them all in one folder and you're done. But if you acquired different sets of images with different sets of settings, those have to be subgrouped into subfolders. So for example, if you took four channel images with a 20x objective, and with a 40x objective, you need to put the 20x images in one folder and the 40x images in another. If you took some images with the same objective, but in some cases you took four channels, and in other cases you took three channels, you need to have a subfolder for those. If you took everything the same, but just adjusted the settings themselves because you were doing different kinds of samples and some, some were dimmer than others, those also have to be in different subfolders. So the subfolders are going to contain images that were acquired with exactly the same settings, and those are the images that you're going to be comparing to each other. Finally, the folders with the image, images should only have the images. So those folders shouldn't have subfolders, and they shouldn't have other kinds of files, because if they do, they will trip up the macros that we'll use to process them. In addition to proper data, you'll need to have proper software. You will, that means you will need to download, download and install Fiji, and download and install MSL macros that will allow you to do the processing. I will include links for how to do that and where you can do those things in the comments to this video. Uh, note that the acquisition computer, so the computers connected to the microscopes in the core, already have Fiji and MSL, the proper MSL macros, as does the workstation in our core. However, if you're doing um, the conversion, um, excuse me, not the conversion, the adjustments in the data on your own laptop or lab computer, you will need to have these things else you won't be able to do any practice. Okay, so I'm going to open Fiji. I have already installed the plugins I mentioned. I put them in a subfolder of the plugins menu, which you can see down here, which I called MSL. And so the two plugins that we'll need are BX61 Convert Fiji and RGB Maker. If we were using data from the IX81, we would need the IX81 Convert Fiji. The particular data set I'm going to use as an example was acquired on the BX61, so that's the first macro that we're going to use now. Let me show you how the data is organized. Um, I have, as I was developing this macro, a lot of different data sets. And I group them, as I mentioned before, so that each folder in this um, folder has, it, so each subfolder in this folder has data that is of the same kind. So these are five images. They were all acquired with a 20x. They all had four chan channels, and they were a single Z slice. One quick check that you can do to make sure that when you grouped your data, all of the data of the same kind ended up in the same place is to make sure they have the same size. That is a necessary but not sufficient condition to indicate that they were acquired with the same conditions. But certainly if one of these had a different size, we would know that um, that was acquired differently and it should not be in this folder for the processing that I'm gonna show you in a moment. Okay, so how do we process these images? Uh, so first, it's just what's the goal here? So the goal is to be able to adjust the images all at once so we can see what the effects of the adjustments are on all images and then to generate images that we can see and share easily with colleagues so what do i mean by that so if we go to this data set and we double click on any of these ome tiff files what happens is that when we look at it in the windows viewer it's completely dark 
Uh, the reasons for this I'm not going to go into right now, but it has to do with the bit depth of the images. Just trust me that when you do this, particularly on the BX61, you're going to have this problem. This does not mean that your data is not here. It just means it's being displayed incorrectly. So the steps we're going to take are going to help you be able to display the data correctly in a way that's easy to share with colleagues. If instead of double clicking on that image, we were to drag it into Fiji, you can see that at least we see something now, but there are a number of problems with the way this is displayed. First, the size of the image is only noted in pixels. So the software does not know the spatial scale of this image. We don't know if this is one micron, 100, 200. We have no idea. The other issue is that while multiple channels are visible here, the software does not know they are multiple channels. So we can't color them separately. Um, and instead, the software thinks this is a time lapse. So all of these issues with the data are things that the macros will take care of us, that will take care of for us very simply. So how do we use them? So we go to plugins, we go to MSL, and we run BX61 convert Fiji. So when we run this, we get the following dialog box where we need to choose the objective with which things were acquired. For this data set, the objective used was the 20X, so that's the correct one the number of channels of the data set. So for this particular case, there were four channels. The amount of binning. So if you don't know, this number was almost certainly one. That is the default on the uh, velocity software when you're doing acquisition. We need to indicate whether we did uh, we performed Z stacking. So whether we took more than one image spaced in the Z dimension. In this case, we did not. We want to leave make montage clicked because this is required if you need to make RGB images. So the RGB images are the ones you're going to share with your colleagues. And we have the option to pick the colors. So the default is red, green, blue, and gray, meaning if you have four channels, these will be the colors of those four channels. If you have two, there'll be red, green, and so on. So this may be uh, the proper scheme with which you want your channel's colored, but it may not. You want may want to do magenta, cyan. Uh, you may not have acquired them in the order where you do red, green, blue, and gray. Um, you may have two channels where one was the DAPI and one was a green floor for, so clearly red and green is not going to work. If you have any of those scenarios, you want to click here to make sure you can change them. In the particular data set that uh, I'm using as an example for this video, there were four channels. Um, and they were a red floor for, a green floor for, a blue floor for, and a far red floor for acquired in that order. Since the far red floor for, a typical scheme to color it is the gray scale. This seems fine, so I'm not going to click on pick colors. I'm going to say OK. So the first thing the macro is going to do is ask us where the data we're interested in is. And so in this case, we're interested in data that's in this folder. So I'm going to say, click on that and say select. Once I do that, the macro starts doing stuff, which you can see because there are numbers here and things happening. You can also see I have the, um, the particular folder here. And so you can see it created subfolders. And then it gives us a reminder. It tells us, remember to save your montage after you make changes to display colors or intensities. And these settings will be applied to all color images generated by RGB Maker plugin, which is the next plugin we're going to use. So I'm going to say OK. What happens after this is the software creates a montage of all the images that were in the folder that we pointed it to. And so there were six images in this folder. And so we have a montage of six images. It also opens up this channels tool and the brightness and contrast tool. So we can look at the different channels in our data by toggling here. We can look at a composite of all the channels by clicking here on composite. I'm going to go back to single color. And the coloring scheme is the one, uh, in this case, the default one. So red, green, blue, and gray. So, so now we need to adjust the images. And this is where the montage comes in handy, because we're going to use the brightness and contrast um, toolbar to adjust how the images look. But the advantage of doing it this way is that we will be able to see what those adjustments look like on all images at once. The two things that we're going to used to make these adjustments are the minimum slider and the maximum slider. So the maximum slider, if we grab this slider and move it to the left, it will make the images get brighter. If we grab the minimum slider and move it to the right, what we do is we make 
the dim things in the image get dimmer, possibly even disappear if we move it far enough. And by disappear, I mean turn completely black. So we need to figure out a combination of settings that faithfully represents our data while highlighting the things that we care about the most. So we obviously don't want something like this because this presents a very misleading view of the data in that there are these giant blobs here which are completely blown out, but that's because we've dragged this too far to the left. On the other hand, dragging it all the way to the right may be a bad answer as well because we really can't see much detail here. It's just too dark and it's too dark because there are some speckles which are very bright. So if those speckles are not something we're particularly interested in, we can drag this to the left and bring out more detail here, which perhaps we are interested in. As far as the minimum goes, if we drag this too far to the right, we get rid out of a lot of actually useful information and present a very misleading picture where the, where the background was completely dark when in, in reality it wasn't. So how to set this correctly, um, you have to think very carefully about how you represent your data as faithfully as possible. Um, one thing that you can use is if you have controls where you know that um, those controls don't have any staining, you can set the minimum so that you don't see anything in those controls. Let's say these two were something like that. You can set the minimum so you don't see any of the background here. And so maybe that's actually the quote unquote real signal. So this is something you'll have to figure out for yourself. I can provide some advice, but it really depends on each sample. Uh, what you want to do is not make mistakes by kind of over adjusting things in one direction or the other. Other things to keep in mind, I would not fiddle with brightness and contrast. These are controls that work better for bright field images. I wouldn't use them for fluorescent images. And never hit the apply button. If you hit the apply button, these adjustments that you're making right now, which are not actually affecting the data, they're just affecting how the data looks. If you hit apply, these will be rewritten into the data. And so you will have forever changed the data and that's going to screw everything up going forward. So you never want to hit apply. You want to keep the data um, in its sort of raw form and only change how it looks by moving these things. Okay, so now we need to make these adjustments for each channel. So I'm going to go to the green and do something similar. I'm going to go to the blue, which is DAPI, so nuclei, do something similar. And I'm going to go to the gray. And so here, these are pretty clearly controls where there was nothing. I'm going to adjust that. And then I can look at the composite and see what they all look like together. And maybe I really actually want a composite of these two or maybe these three. And I can kind of see whether it looks the way I, I want it to look. Now, the advantage of using this macro is we can see what these adjustments do to everybody at once. But also, what we can do is make sure that the exact same adjustment is applied to all the images. So if we acquire the images the same and we make display adjustments that are the same across all images, then if the samples were prepared in the same manner, except for whatever experimental variable we tweaked, then we can actually compare the images and say, oh, this is redder here because there was more red fluorophore because there was more of the protein that I labeled with the red fluorophore compared to this image. Why? Because I prepared everything the same I acquired everything with the same settings, and I adjusted the display settings of all the images equally. OK, so once we're done adjusting the settings, what we need to do is save this image. So overwrite what it was before. What we'll, we'll be doing when we do that, so I'm going to go to File, Save, is we haven't changed the data, but now we've embedded these display settings into this image. And the reason this is important is because um, the next macro we're going to use is going to take the information from here and then apply it to all the images, but make images in a format that you can easily share with your colleagues. So let's run that macro. So if we go to plugins, we're now going to go to MSL and run RGME Maker. So I'm going to click here. And here there are some notes. This is important. This macro assumes you have already run BX61 convert or IX81 convert. We have. Select the same input directory as for the BX61 convert or IX81 convert macro. OK, we'll do that. You can see if we haven't fiddled with anything in the, in the Explorer, we are already set in the correct directory, which is this one. So I'm going to say select. And here it asks me a bunch of questions. It asks me, do you want to make individual RGB, uh, individual channel RGB images? So what this means is, 
do we want an image of the composite and an image of the red, green, blue, and gray channels? And so usually it's a good idea to leave that on. And do we want to add a scale bar? And so this is up to you. So I'm going to leave them both on, so just so you can see what happens. So here it asks you whether you which channels you want to include in your composite image. So let's say we, we don't really care about the far red, so I'm going to exclude it. And we're only going to use the first three channels, the red, green, and blue, for the composite image. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to say OK. And finally, ask me, since I said I wanted a scale bar, what are the parameters? So I'm just going to modify this so that it's 100 micron scale bar in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to change that to lower right corner. And I'm going to say I don't want any text. I'll put the text in the figure legend. So I'm going to say OK. So what it's doing now, if we go to the folder, it made a new subfolder called Fiji RGBs. And in this subfolder, we now have a composite image for each one and the single channel images for each one. And these have all been displayed with the settings that we made in the, that we tweaked in the montage image, and they've all been uh, tweaked the same. So we can actually look at these images very easily using just a photo viewer in Windows. So this is good for sharing things. But it's also great because they've been tweaked in a way that they were all adjusted the same, so that if this image has a brighter red than this image, that's because there was more red fluorophore in this image. And so therefore, you can share these images with your colleagues very easily. The other thing to note is if you need to do analysis, you can do it with these images, the ones in Fiji TIFFs scaled. These have the advantage that when you drag them into Fiji, what you will see is that Fiji knows that this is a four channel image and it has the right dimensions. So we started with files that were hard to share, hard to look at, and that didn't have the proper scaling. And now we have files where we can, if we drag them into Fiji, we can analyze them properly because Fiji knows that they are four channel images and it has the proper scaling. And we have RGB images, which we're not going to use for analysis, but which are ideal for just visualizing the data and sharing it with our colleagues. Because if they double click on this, it will look the same um, as you see here. So I hope this was useful. Uh, and please let me know if you have any questions.